because he switched his field, however, he lost his scholarship and had to pay tuition fees. He received a government bursary and his family also donated money. His older brother Augustine even gave up money for a trip home from his job as a civil servant so Chinua could continue his studies. From its inception, the university had a strong English faculty and it includes many famous writers amongst its alumni. These include Nobel laureate Wally Shoinka, novelist Alicia Madi, poet and playwright John Pepe Clark, and poet Christopher Okibo. In 1950, Achebe wrote a piece for the University Herald entitled Paula Undergraduate, his debut as an author. It used irony and humor to celebrate the intellectual vigor of his classmates. He followed this with other essays and letters about philosophy and freedom in academia, some of which were published in another campus magazine, The Borg. He served as the Herald's editor during the 1951 to 1952 school year. While at the university, Achebe wrote his first short story, In the Village Church, which combines details of life in rural Nigeria with Christian institutions and icons, a style which appears in many of his later works. At the university, Achebe rejected his British name, Albert, so named after Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria. After the final examinations at Ibadan in 1953, Achebe was awarded a second class degree Rattled by not receiving the highest result possible, he was uncertain how to proceed after graduation. He returned to his hometown of Ig Ogidi to search through his options. While he meditated on his possible career paths, Achebe was visited by a friend from the university, who convinced him to apply for an English teaching position at the Merchants of Light School at Oba. It was a ramshackle institution with a crumbling infrastructure and a mega library. The school was built on what the residents called Bad Bush, a section of land thought to be tainted by unfriendly spirits. Later in Things Fall Apart, Achebe describes a similar area called the Evil Forest, where the Christian missionaries are given a place to build their church. As a teacher, he urged his students to read extensively and be original in their work. The students did not have access to the newspapers he had read as a student. So Achebe made his own available in the classroom. He taught in Oba for four months, but when an opportunity arose in 1954 to work for the Nigerian Broadcasting Service, NBS, he left the school and moved to Lagos. The NBS, a radio network started in 1933 by the colonial government, assigned Achebe to the talks department. While in Lagos, Achebe started work on a novel. This was challenging since very little African fiction had been written in English, although Amos Tutuola's Palm Wine Drink Card, 1952, and Cyprian Equence's People of the City, 1954, were notable exceptions. While appreciating Equence's work, Achebe worked hard to develop his own style, even as he pioneered the creation of the Nigerian novel itself. Were you born a writer? Yes, I think so. I think so because I was, no, I don't remember any day that anybody said to me, you go and start uh, writing or go and learn uh, uh, about writing. Uh, it was there and I don't uh, remember uh, ever being offended because I was reading a story or, or I was hearing in 1956, Achebe was selected for training in London at a staff school run by the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. His first trip out of Nigeria was an opportunity to advise his technical production skills and to solicit feedback on his novel, which was later split into two books. In London, he met a novelist named Gilbert Phelps, to whom he offered the manuscript. Phelps responded with great enthusiasm asking Achebe if he could show it to his editor and publishers. Achebe declined, insisting that it needed more work. Back in Nigeria, Achebe set to work revising and editing his novel, now entitled Things Fall Apart, after a line in the poem The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. He cut away the second and third sections of the book, leaving only the story of a young farmer named Okonkwo. 
He added sections, improved various chapters and restructured the prose. By 1957, he had sculpted it to his liking and took advantage of an advertisement offering a typing service. He sent his only copy of his handwritten manuscript, along with the £22 fee, to the London company. After he waited several months without receiving any communication from the typing service, Achebe began to worry. His boss at the NBS, Angela Beatty, was going to London for her annual leave. He asked her to visit the company. She did, and angrily demanded to know why it was lying ignored in the corner of the office. The company quickly sent a typed copy to Achebe. Beatty's intervention was crucial for his ability to continue as a writer. Had a novel been lost, he later said, I would have been so discouraged that I would probably have given up altogether. In 1958, Achebe sent his novel to the agent recommended by Gilbert Phelps in London. It was sent to several publishing houses. Some rejected it immediately, claiming that fiction from African writers had no market potential. Finally, it reached the office of Henneman, where executives hesitated until an educational advisor, Donald McRae, just back in England after a trip through West Africa, read the book and forced the company's hand with his so-set report. This is the best novel I have read since the war. Henneman published 2,000 hardcover copies of Things Fall Apart on 17 June 1958. According to Alan Hill, employed by the publisher at the time, the company did not touch a word of it in preparation for release. The book was received well by the British press and received positive reviews from critic Walter Allen and novelist Angus Wilson. Three days after publication, the Times Literary Supplement wrote that the book genuinely succeeds in presenting tribal life from the inside. The Observer called it an excellent novel, and the literary magazine Time and Tide said that Mr. Achebe's style is a model for us parents. Initial reception in Nigeria was mixed. When Hill tried to promote the book in West Africa, he was met with skepticism and ridicule. The faculty at the University of Ibadan was amused at the thought of a worthwhile novel being written by an alumnus. Others were more supportive. One review in the magazine Black Ophel said, The book as a whole creates for the reader such a vivid picture of evil life that the plot and characters are little more than symbols representing a way of life lost irrevocably within living memory. In the book, Okonkwo struggles with the legacy of his father. A shiftless debtor fond of playing the flute, as well as the complications and contradictions that arise when white missionaries arrive in his village of Omofia, exploring the terrain of cultural conflict, particularly the encounter between evil tradition and Christian doctrine. Achebe returns to the themes of his earlier stories, which grew from his own background. Things Fall Apart has become one of the most important books in African literature. Selling over 8 million copies around the world, it has been translated into 50 languages, making Achebe the most translated African writer of all time. What brings you here so early as to make you live so angry and so unhappy? Who oh, no, can you find has made my money a greater burden than I came with. How? Oh. He owes me ten scores of cows and will never pay. 